Okay, hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at two very important derivations associated with Ampere's law. So firstly, we're going to be looking at around a current carrying wire. So we're going to be looking at some distance R. Um, in this case, we have a current carrying wire going into the page. But uh, it doesn't matter the direction because the derivation is the same. But we're just essentially using this formula which states that the integral of B dot DL is equal to mu naught I enclosed. So first thing we do when we set up an Ampere's law problem is we set up an Amperian loop. And in this case, we're just going to be looking at two Amperian loops today in this video with two derivations. So essentially, for this Amperian loop, we are setting up a circle at some radius r from the uh, current carrying wire. And it's essentially a set of equidistant points from the current carrying wire. Uh, so it's going to be a circle of radius r. So now what we need to do is consider the angular separation between B and DL because we've got a cross product in the integral. So of course we remember a cross product of B dot DL is simply equal to B DL cos theta. So by considering the angular separation we know that both are going to be tangential to the circle at any given instant and consequently we end up with um, both of them having an angular separation of zero degrees between the two. So if I just move this here, we can then hence write BDL cos theta, and then because the cos of 0 is equal to 1, we just end up with the integral of BDL. Now as all the points on the Amperian loop are the same distance r, the magnetic field is equivalent at any point on the loop, our Amperian loop that we set up before, and consequently we can factor out B as being a constant. The magnetic field is constant at any point on that Amperian loop. So we take it outside of the integral. Consequently, we end up with B integral DL equals mu naught, which is the permeability constant of 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 uh, I enclosed, where I enclosed is the enclosed current. Then we integrate over dl, in this case we are circle, so when we're integrating dl we're obviously going to end up with 2 pi r. And from there we just rearrange by bringing 2 pi r into the denominator on the right hand side, and we've got an expression for b at some distance r with a current carrying wire, when we're outside of that current carrying wire. And of course, just to remind you, the constant mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 in terms of its magnitude. So that's how we go about deriving, for some distance, little r, what's going on. So now we consider inside a current carrying wire. This time we need to consider two things. We need to consider little r as being the radius of our Amperian loop, which is somewhere inside this uh, current carrying wire, which is um, the uh, full circle, the non-dotted circle is our actual wire, and that has a radius of capital R, our wire. So what we do is we consider I as being the current through the entire wire, and then we consider I enclosed as being the current inside the Amperian loop. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, make an assumption that the current density is uniform across the entire wire. Otherwise the calculation gets a little bit messy, we have to introduce things like current density, but in this case we're just going to be looking at a straightforward general case where we assume that it's a constant, nice flow, the uniform flow throughout the entire wire. And as such, I enclosed is just a fraction of total I. And that fraction can be considered by thinking about the area. Because if we have a uniform current through the wire, we can just take a uh, fraction of that area. And that fraction of the area is just going to be pi little r squared on pi r squared. So obviously that's the area of the entire circle. And then there's the area of our Amperian loop. So I is for the entire circle, but we're multiplying it by a fraction based on our Amperian loop. Hopefully that makes uh, a bit of sense. It sort of seems quite logical, so when you get your head around it, it should become second nature to sort of think of those quantities. Think of that as being a fraction when you have something uniform. But uh, again, maybe you might need to consider this concept by watching the video again uh, if necessary, but uh, event that is a really good step we can take to make this a whole lot simpler than it would elsewise be by making that assumption. So. As such, we can substitute in our value for I enclosed that we just found into the Ampere's law expression, the integral of B dot DL equals mu naught pi little r squared on pi big r squared I. 
be as constant again at any point on the Amperian loop because it's in a circle which represents a set of equidistant points. So what we do now is we uh, simply do what we did before. We integrate over dl and then we move it to the right hand side which unfortunately looks like I've already skipped ahead of myself. That shouldn't be there yet. <laughs> and then what happens from that point on is we start cancelling down once we move the pi, uh, uh, 2 pi little r into the denominator on the right hand side. So b is equal to that. We cancel out one of our r's in the numerator and, one, and the r in the denominator. We cancel out pi in both numerator and denominator. And then from there we're left with this expression which is indeed a linear expression. It varies with r to the power of 1. So this is for looking at a point somewhere inside the actual um, current carrying wire. So if we plot a graph of this of b against r, where r is the radius of our Amperian loop um, when it's a circle, we can see that inside, before we reach the radius of the wire, it's going to vary linearly, the magnetic field, at some distance. But then when we get outside, we remember from our first part, we can see this one's linear but inside the current carrying wire. But for our very first one, we can see that it's a 1 on R relationship, so exponential decay. And so we're going to get it fading off as 1 on R here because of that proportionality between B and R. So we know that the magnetic field is greatest when I encloses largest and R is smallest. Hopefully this video was relatively uh, easy, to straight, uh, relatively straightforward to follow along with. Um, let me know if you have any comments below. Thank you for watching. And there are two basic Ampere Law derivations.